If you've ever run into an issue where you define a variable in one place and then try to use it in another place and it doesn't work, or if you see two variables with the same name and they have different values and you're not sure why, both of these problems are almost always related to understanding scoping. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the four different types of scope in JavaScript so you don't have to run into these bugs anymore. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today I'm going to help you clean up some bugs in your code related to scoping. So in JavaScript, there are four different types of scopes. There is a global scope, a module scope, a function scope, and a block scope. And that may sound like a lot of information to understand, but in reality, when you're writing your code, you really only need to worry about block scope and module scope because most things you work with are going to be working within those two different scope levels. So to get started, I kind of want to explain what a scope even is. Essentially, a scope is just a set of code that has all of your variables defined in it, and those variables are only accessible inside that scope. Anything outside that scope does not have access to those variables. So let's write a really simple little bit of code. Let's just say const a equals one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function inside of here. We'll just call it test. And inside this function, we're going to say const b equals two. I'll console.log a and b inside of here. And then outside this function, I'm going to console.log a and b as well. And we're just going to call that test function just like this. Now, when I save my code, you're going to see over on the right, we get one and two being logged. And that's coming from this very first console log here. I can even just put the text here in there so we can see. This is our very first console log. And then we're getting an error on the second one saying uncaught reference error b is not defined. And the entire reason for that is that our variable b is defined inside the function called test, while our variable a is defined out here in essentially our global scope. So this variable b is inside this function and it's only accessible in this function because it's scoped to that function. This is how scoping works. Essentially, anytime you define a variable inside of something like a function or an if statement, it is going to be scoped into that function or that if statement. And that's how this different levels of scoping is going to work. So the first level of scoping I want to talk about is going to be global scoping because that's the easiest to understand since it's literally global. It is accessible everywhere. So what I have is an index.html file, and I have two different scripts being loaded. I have this script, which is like not a module script. It's just a normal JavaScript script. And then this one right here is using modules for its import export of everything. If you're unfamiliar with what modules are in JavaScript, I have a full video on them. I'll link in the cards and description for you. But essentially, a module is a way to break up your code into various different files and import them into one another. But JavaScript actually breaks down global scope and module scope into its own different scopes. So we need to talk about both of these types of files. So in this non-module file, I just want to create a variable called global bar. I'm going to set it equal to the text global, just like that. And this is defined in my non-module script. So this is just the thing that's being loaded at the very top of my script right here. Then inside this script.js, I'm going to console.log, whoops, console.log that global variable. And if I hit save, you can see it prints out that text global. The reason for that is that this variable defined inside of this file is in the global scope. As you can see, it's at the top of my file. It's not wrapped in any functions or if statements or anything like that. It's just at the very top of my file, this file is not using modules. So if you have a file that's not using modules to be imported onto your page, and that file has variables defined at the top of the file or anywhere that's not inside of a scope or a function, those are going to be global variables accessible in any other file on your entire project. Now this is generally a thing you want to avoid, mostly because having global variables really pollutes your code because what if inside of here, you didn't want this global variable, but now you have it and you have access to it and it just makes it hard to track changes if everything is global. This is why JavaScript, most of the time when you're writing it, you'll be writing it using modules. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside this module script right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna just create a variable, whoops, we're gonna call it module var and we're gonna set this equal to the text module. And then I'm going to export another variable. This is going to be a const called exported var, which is going to be equal to the text exported. Now inside my script, I can import that variable. So I can import that exported var from module script just like this. And now what I can do is I can do console log of my exported variable. This is going to work just fine. As long as I come in here and I just say .js, now you can see that that prints out the text exported just fine. And that's because with modules, anything you export from the module is available anywhere you import that, and it's just available inside that one single file. But what about that other variable I created, that module var right here? Well, let's try to print out module var and see what happens. When I save, you're gonna notice we get an error. It's saying it's not defined. And this is the big difference between global scope and module scope. 
Global scope means if you define a variable, it's available in every other file that gets loaded after it. Module scope, if you're using modules like we are, means that if you define a variable in a file, it's only available within that file unless you explicitly export that out. So we're exporting this variable right here, which is why we can use it. For this module variable, we're not exporting, which means it's only available inside this module script file, and it's not available in this script file where we're importing everything else. That's the important thing to understand about the difference between global and module scope. So for the most part, if you're writing your code using modules, which is most likely what you're going to be using, you don't really need to worry about global scope at all because it really doesn't apply unless you're not using modules, which in most cases you should be using. And just understanding that module scope means that variables are only accessible inside the file they're defined in, that's really important to understand about module scoping. Now the other two scopes we wanna talk about are function scoping and block scoping. And really you only need to worry about block scoping, but I'm gonna show you exactly how both of them work. So what we can do is we can go back into our script file. Let's just get rid of all this other code. We don't even need it. We can get rid of this global variable. We're gonna go inside of our script. And here we're gonna be talking about the difference between function scoping and block scoping. So let's just define a function. We're just gonna call it test again. And inside here, we're gonna say const b equals two. We've already talked about this. We know that this b variable is only accessible inside of this function because it's scoped inside this function. But there are other things besides functions that create scopes. And this is where block scoping comes in. Let's create an if statement inside of here. We're just going to say if true, so it doesn't really matter. It's always going to run what's in here. We're going to say const c equals 3. Now this const c variable is only available inside of the scope created by our if statement. And a really easy way to see where scopes are created, essentially block scopes, is any time that you see curly braces, that is going to be a block scope. So we have our curly brace for our if right here. It's creating a block scope all the way to the end in curly brace. This is kind of like a shortcut if you're unsure what a scope is. Anything surrounded by curly braces is essentially going to be its own block scope. So now if we come in here, we can say console.log bc. If I save, I make sure I call this test function. You can see it prints out 2, 3. If I move this outside of my scope that has the c variable defined, we're going to get an error because the c variable is only defined within this block level scope. So this is how block and function scoping work. They essentially work exactly the same because a function scope, you can see it's surrounded by these curly braces. So a function is its own block. So this is why you can kind of not even really worry about function scoping because a function is just another type of block that you can create. The only time you do have to worry about function scoping is if you're using something like a variable called var. So if you use var variables, so we can say var b or we can say var c equals three, you're actually gonna notice this code is going to work when we do this. When I save, you can see it prints out two, three. That's because variables defined with the var keyword, they are only function scoped. That means that because this variable c is defined inside the function test, it is available anywhere inside that function test. It doesn't matter that it's only inside this if scope because those are not block level scoped variables. Let and const, those are going to be block level scopes. So when I change this back to const, you can see it breaks. When it's var, it works. And that's because var variables, again, are function scoped while any other variable like a let or a const, those are going to be block level scoped. Now the reason I said you don't really need to worry too much about function versus block scoping is because 99% of the time, you should never be using the var keyword. You should always either be using const or you should be using let instead to create your variables. When you create variables like this, you don't have to worry about function scoping because all of these variables are block level scoped. So all you have to do is worry about the block. So with all these examples we've covered so far, I've kind of talked about how you can define a variable in one place, but it's not accessible in another. You can see we've defined our variable C here, but we're trying to use it outside of the scope it's available in, which is giving us an error that you may not expect. Another thing that a lot of people get tripped up by, is what happens when we have a variable defined in two places? Let's say I have a variable here called C and I have a variable right here called C. So if I console, dot log c inside of here, and I save this, you can see it prints out the value three, while if I'm outside of this if scope, and I save, it prints out the value of two. Now the reason for that is again, because we are doing this by our block level scoping. So inside the block of our test function, our variable c is defined as two, as you can see right here. Now, if we go inside this if statement though, we're inside of this block, our c variable is now defined as three. And these are completely separate variables from one another. They may technically have the same name, but they are two entirely separate variables that have entirely separate values and they never overwrite each other. It'd be the same as if I wrote this as C and B. It's the exact same thing, but the only difference is that when I have these set as C and B, I can now access both C and B while inside of this statement. See, for example, I could print out B and C. But if I overwrite the variable name by changing this to C, 
Well, now it's impossible for me to access the variable with the same name outside of that scope because this new variable kind of overtakes that name. It's not overwriting anything or changing the old variable. It's just having the same exact name, but inside of a different scope. This is why generally when I'm writing code, I don't like to use the same variable name, even if it's going to work just fine. The reason is because it's a little bit confusing to look at. And secondly, if I want access to this outside variable with the same name, well, now I need to do something. I need to change this variable name or I need to change this variable name in order to make that work, which is why generally I like to use different variable names for everything inside my code, even when they could be the same. So a quick recap here, essentially the important things to understand is if you are working with modules, any code that you have defined inside the module is only accessible in that module and not outside of the module unless you explicitly export it with the export keyword. Secondly, any time that you see curly braces such as this, all the code inside of that curly brace is going to be scoped to that particular curly brace and it's only going to be accessible inside of these curly braces or inside of some nested curly braces. So for example, if I wrote code like this, you can see it's going to print out one to my screen. But if I moved a down into this block, whoops, down into this block, and I move my console log outside the block, it's now no longer going to work because the curly braces are defining a block. And this is kind of interesting. You can actually define a block anywhere you want by just putting down some curly braces. It doesn't have to be inside of something like an if statement. This will actually create its own custom block for you. And that's all there is to scoping. This lesson perfectly leads into another lesson that I have on hoisting, and hoisting is another concept that relates to scoping and something that trips up most beginners. So if you're interested in that video, check it out right over here. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.